So starting out the drive in the venue, of course, it's interesting having a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, but with that IVT, it actually helps with acceleration, not having to worry about shift points. Now it's definitely not quick, but it's drivable, I'll say that. And for the price point, it does a pretty good job. Now what does throw me off is not having a, a needle for the speedometer, just having a, a digital readout, which is cool in its own way, but it's also kind of weird. But overall, ride quality is pretty good for this kind of car. Sound acoustics, of course, are not the best, but not terrible, really not bad. And all in all, this is just a really easy vehicle to drive. Now this lane keeping system is interesting because I don't know where the button is for that. Now I knew it comes it came standard with the lane keep assist, but I didn't know it would if it would serve as a lane centering or not. And we'll test it out when we get on the interstate. And we'll put it in a sport mode now. Which of course keeps that engine revved hot. But the, the handling is so far good for this kind of vehicle. Of course, it's no sports car, but it's a lot more agile than I would have expected. And in this sport mode especially, it does get up to speed as it should. Let's turn the cruise on now. And I'm gonna assume that it's more of a lane keep assist system. Yeah, so it just kind of pings me back in as I go in and out. It's not full on lane centering. But still, it does ping you back in. So it's not something where you wanna like take your hands off the wheel even for a second, but it's not just waiting for you to go out the lines and then say, hey. Now coming down that stretch of the interstate doing around the speed limit, 65, 70, ride I could feel a little bit in the pedals but other than that the ride itself was relatively good and the seats are they feel really supportive surprisingly I wouldn't expect them to feel this firm I think a lot of it is because it is skinnier I feel like my body is wider than the seat itself which I haven't felt that in a while but my shoulder blades is kind of where the seats bolsters in and it's kind of feeling kind of like a sports seat almost so take that for what it is but yeah the sport mode is pretty pretty nice for this vehicle like I said it's no sports car and it, it's not fast but the sport mode the sport mode does get you going for this kind of vehicle and then speaking of which, when it comes to vehicles in the segment, you pretty much have the, the Versa, kinda, it's, it's so weird. Maybe the Rogue Sport, the Hyundai makes such interesting vehicles that you never really find a true competitor to it. Maybe a Kia Soul would be pretty close. And I do feel like the powertrain compared to the Kia Soul is better in this. But of course, they're going to be close to twins as they both come from the bigger company, the parent company, excuse me. But maybe a Corolla Cross, a Corolla Hatchback. But this isn't kind of a lane of its own with the Soul. And the Soul's been in its own lane for quite some time because it had a hatch, but it drove like a car. It didn't feel like a small SUV, not even a subcompact SUV. It felt like a small version of a station wagon. 
And that's pretty much what this venue feels like for me. But still a good option for the people that are in that segment. If you tend to drive by yourself, you wanna be able to fold the seat flat and haul all your knickknacks or whatever, this is good for that. And then you're staying below 25 grand sticker price. So for the money, if you're in the market for one of these, this is one of your few options. So still a good car in that sense. But this will bring me to the end of my review of the new 2023 Hyundai Venue SEL.